Welcome back to another update of Marcelina, our Reliance 44 sailboat. Last time I promised you you'd see new floors, and in this episode I'm going to deliver. Well, sort of anyway. Also in the previous episode, I showed you how I was seaming and fairing the deck after replacing all the wet core. And I had also decided that I was going to create a permanent fix to the joint between the coach roof and the deck. In this update, I'll show you how the work on the deck is going and how I tackled the coach roof to deck issue. Finally, I'll show you some prep work for painting the deck and even discuss some planning I'm doing for new chain plates and rigging. So let's jump in. First up, floors. Here they are. I had my cabinet maker do the floors and since we already had the maple for the cabinets, we decided to use some of that maple for the accent stripe with walnut as the main wood. I love the rich character. I said I would sort of show you the new floors because I was really hoping to have them in the boat by now, but without the cabinets roughed in yet, we can't put in the floors. I am, however, making progress on the deck. I seemed and fared everywhere the core was replaced. There were a few spots, like this chain plate opening, that needed to be glassed over and made flush with the deck. The process is the same as seaming areas where the top skin was removed for core replacement. First, you grind back the fiberglass to a bevel. Then you apply epoxy. Lay in the 1708 fiberglass cloth, followed by more epoxy, and then the one and a half ounce chop strand mat, or CSM. Then, of course, it's rolled to remove any air bubbles and ensure the fiberglass is fully saturated. The opening is very narrow, so I didn't bother filling the hole or applying fiberglass underneath, which I would do for larger openings. The plan for the coach roof to deck seam was to dig out the old silicone sealant and then lay in a one half inch wide strip of chop strand mat with thickened epoxy and make a fillet between the coach roof and the deck. Sounds simple enough, but getting the CSM to bend and stay put was a challenge. Once cured, I converted a fiberglass roller by cutting off the roller end and epoxying in place a piece of PVC tubing. Applying a little adhesive back sandpaper and voila, the perfect tool for fairing the epoxy in the joint. The next step for the deck was to sand off the remaining existing non-skid surface. I had originally done some of this with a disc sander. The problem, however, is twofold. You need to tip the sander in an angle and it's very aggressive. It removed the non-skid quite nicely, but the result was a wavy, uneven surface. So instead, I invested in a good heavy-duty orbital sander. It stays perfectly flat and leaves the surface ready to prime without having to fill in gouges and depressions. The downside is that it took me something like 40 hours of sanding to do the whole deck. The upside is that I can now bench press a minivan. Finally, I could apply the two coats of primer, which I did with a brush and roller. Once that was cured, it was back to sanding again. Only this time it was just a light sanding with 220 grit paper just to take the shine off the primer and help the paint bond to it. So in the next update, I should be able to show you a brand new painted deck surface. During the few days that the primer coat took to fully cure, I decided to clean and re-grease one of the primary winches. It's an old Barlow winch, which very well could be the original. It's a beautiful, heavy work of bronze. I photographed each step in disassembly so I could figure out how to reassemble everything. You can see how the dirt and dust stuck to the grease, and even how the grease got into the pawls, making them stick. I cleaned and re-greased everything, except for the pulse. They were oiled so that they won't stick again. This was a messy job, so please don't tell my wife I cleaned it on the kitchen counter. I've shown before how I was replacing the steel chain plate supports inside the boat with a product called G10, 
a manufactured epoxy and fiberglass composite. The new chain plates will be on the outside of the hull and bolted through the slabs of G10. I've created preliminary drawings for the new chain plates and I'm going to visit Schaefer Marine in New Bedford, Massachusetts where I hope to have new chain plates made. I believe I've sized them adequately and I've picked the right material, 316 stainless steel, but I'm not sure about fitting them to the curve of the hull or a few other details. I also want to talk to the folks at Schaefer Marine about a new roller furler for the head sail, adding an inner stay with a roller furler for a stay sail, and eventually adding in-boom roller furlers for both the main and the mizzen. I know that will be very expensive, so I'm already investigating how much I can get from my two children and a kidney, just in case. In the next update, I should be reinstalling the deck hardware and hopefully be able to show you some progress on the interior. I'll also report on my visit to Schaefer Marine and share with you what I learned from the experts. Thanks for watching.